Good evening, everyone. Welcome to 12 Sports tonight. We are not tired yet. Cameron Cox coming to you live from Seattle. Yes, it's a little cold here. Lena Washington, Luke Linden, they're probably nice and cozy back in the studio. Guys, I'll just say this simply. Our city has the best football team in the NFL. And you have the worst beanie in Seattle <laughs> on right now, Cameron. We'll get to that later in the show. But we've got great stories, interviews from the pros to the preps. We are telling you how a pair of former pro athletes are leading the Hamilton High School football program to their sons. Yes, and we'll also explain how Sun star Chris Paul might be coming for our jobs. Oh, boy. But first, as always, we start with our best of the night. To show his leadership on this team and help out another captain, regardless of their relationship, I just speaks to what that's Colt's job in the locker room and what other people in the locker room think of him. It's been really cool to watch. Yeah, and it was really on the field, it was really the efficiency for me for Colt McCoy. Only had a handful of incompletions, and the confidence in the yeah. pocket looked like a completely different quarterback from a week ago. It was, uh, it was really great to see him step into that role and lead this team to a big victory on the road. Yeah, good to see Colt McCoy getting it done and doing it in stride today. He looked cool, calm, collected out there, and hopefully uh, he continues to bring it for the cool. Cardinals. Uh, they're more than capable of doing it. As the weather gets colder, it's going to come down to defense, and this is a championship-level defense moving forward. And not to mention Arizona holding Seattle to just one of three in the red zone. And when you look at the time of possession, it was nearly double, uh, just going to show the Cardinals really maintaining most of the possession in the game and not really letting Russell Wilson and the Seahawks get any kind of momentum rolling, even though, again, Cam, I know we kind of had a debate. Prater has got to make those field goals. Then there would be no pressure watching the game. Luke, it's cold here, man. Cut the guy some break. Fans on Twitter were eating him alive. The dude just had his fourth child this week. He's going to be okay, guys. He's one of the best to do it. Uh, now we just need to worry about that the Cardinals don't have too much stuffing over the break. And from one top seed, speaking of the Cardinals, to another, the Phoenix Suns are in fuego right now. They've won 12 straight and find themselves as the two seed in the West currently. That's sure a pretty sight, isn't it? And Phoenix hoping to close that gap on the Warriors with a victory earlier tonight in the Suns. Actually had a shot of redemption against the Denver Nuggets who beat Phoenix on opening night. But how a lot can change over a month, right? Denver was actually missing several key players and the Suns picking up right where they left off at full speed. If this first quarter of action doesn't scream hottest team in the league, not really sure what will. The Suns dropped the season best 48 points in the first quarter. 48 points! From That's C a lot. That's a lot from CP. It's actually season best. Uh, from CP3 to Devin Booker, who had 17 points. The Suns haven't lost since October 27th, right before Halloween, and it showed yet again. Just about everyone on the roster chipping in for the massive 126 to 97 victory. Make it 12 straight for Phoenix. That's a dozen, as they also won their eighth consecutive game at home. So Luke, the event is going down November 28th and 29th, and he's so excited to get it yeah. done. And it's been in the works since spring, and we know that he is so passionate about this. His brother played mm -hmm. at Hampton, so uh, it's going to be a fun experience for those teams to travel, the camaraderie that they're going to build, and to enjoy some really nice weather here it, in the Valley. That, and it's also so great to see these athletes give back and promote these schools that they're so passionate yeah. about. Because I used to work in North Carolina. I've interviewed him a handful of times when he was at Winston-Salem State promoting the HBC schools and communities. Uh, it's just so great to see him continue to be active in that respect. You gotta love it. Yeah, and you gotta protect the student ID number because you yeah. don't want people swiping <laughs> yeah. for cereal uh -uh. at the calf. Uh -uh. That's smart, CP3. <laughs> Still to come in the next three minutes, we're looking ahead to what's next for ASU football, and it doesn't look too bright at the moment. No, it doesn't. Plus, we'll introduce you to two of the top high school football players in the state who have winning in their bloodline. And we're naming our weekend MVP after a special night at Gila River Arena. 12 Sports Tonight. We'll be right back after this. Sports Tonight is sponsored. Welcome by back to 12 Sports Tonight. Are you ready to rumble? Ding, ding, ding. The Lakers and Pistons sure were. Sound up. Isaiah's going after him. They've got to hold him back. Nice. Oh my goodness, the malice at the Palace revisited tonight. A brawl broke out between the Lakers and the Pistons after LeBron James elbowed Isaiah Stewart in the head, actually giving him a cut that required five stitches. You can tell he's not too happy here. He would end up charging at multiple Lakers, including LeBron and Anthony Davis. LeBron and Stewart were both ejected, but uh, quite a scene there for uh, these NBA players. Yeah, we're going to call this the melee in Motor City, Motor City Melee. And then you thought he was done, but he came back for an encore performance. A lot of blood, a lot of, a lot of ejections, a lot of fines. 
sure to be levied against these players. Tell us how you really feel, Isaiah Stewart. Sheesh! I wish we saw some fight like that from ASU football. Unfortunately, ASU is left dreaming of success like that. Like this, I should say. Utah clinching the Pac-12 South for the fourth time in the past six years after beating Oregon yesterday. And it didn't go well for the Devils, did it, Lena? Nope, but ASU fans, Luke, by now have gotten used to this. Herm Edwards and company came into this season with Rose Bowl aspirations. But once again, this train is off the tracks and it's hard for the Sun Devils to keep on chugging. I mean, Luke, turnovers, seven false starts, <laughs> missed field goals. I mean, I don't know what could have else. To say. What, what, what's left to say? Uh, fans have a lot to say, though, mm -hmm. on Twitter, and they have really for the last several weeks. Um, and a lot of people don't expect to see Herm back here in Tempe. We know that Ray Anderson set a standard when he hired Herm yep. in terms of how they want to perform in the Pac-12. They did not meet those expectations. Mm -hmm. Utah got it done, and they came out dominant against Oregon to seal it uh, because ASU uh, keep the staved off elimination for the Pac-12 South yeah. title last week, but they were unable to capitalize on a big moment last night. I just feel bad for the fans. You know, you have such high expectations for this program, especially this year, Rose Bowl aspirations. Yeah. I mean, you have the best roster you've had in a long time, and it's just a roller coaster every single week. The peaks and valleys, but I just feel like so many more valleys and peaks yeah. and it's I almost at this point I hate to say this but it's you almost expect it at, the, at, at this stage and with Herm Edwards as the head coach and like you mentioned hot seat I think the seat is very hot sizzling it's, at this point absolutely uh, I will say one kind of positive from this game I will say is Chandler native Chase Lucas now has the alt is all-time leader in career starts for ASU, the super senior, we know he's got a lot of pride for mm -hmm. playing for his hometown team, but gosh, I would have loved to have seen him make another I trip know. to Pasadena to close out his college career. If only. Yeah, if only. All right, now to some high school football. You saw Chase Lucas getting it done with the Wolves only a couple years ago. Well, the playoffs continue this week with the quarterfinal action for the big schools, 4A, 5A, 6A, all heading into the second round while the Open gets underway. That's the big ticket. And for more on the Open, let's hand it over to Luke. I like that. All eyes will be on the number one seed Hamilton Huskies during their quest for a state title. Now the roster is loaded with talent, we all know that. And it makes sense when you realize two of the Huskies star players are learning from some of the best, their dads. World champs Junior Spivey and Russell Davis. Time now for our candid conversation from the sidelines. I have to ask, having both of you played uh, professional sports, What's the biggest difference between a baseball dad? 3-2 again. Hit deep to left center. Frio back. Will he have room? At the warning track. At the wall. And a football dad. I want to hear from both of you. I'm just an athletic dad. <laughs> you know, I never, like, looked at myself as a baseball player. I'm an athlete. An athlete that chose to play baseball. Just wanted the kids to have fun and fall in love with the sport, whatever sport that was. He wanted me to, to pick what I enjoy and take that to heart. And just no matter what I choose, whether it's football, baseball, or basketball, to go with what I love and work hard at it. So I think that's the difference between a football dad and, and a baseball dad because it's like baseball, they can hear you. It's quiet, you know, it's like, oh, okay, but football, everybody's yelling and screaming, so you can kind of get away with some things. So. What knowledge have you passed down to your sons that maybe kids that haven't had fathers that have played at the highest level may not have received? Work ethic. Your work ethic has to be second to none. No one should outwork you. you know, to be able to outthink your opponent, yeah. to be a couple of moves ahead of him, those are the kind of advantages I think with having parents who played at a high level like yeah. that. That's what you give a kid is the more, the intellectual part of the game. Did both of you know your sons would be this talented and, and, and thrive this much on the football field at this stage in their young athletic careers? I'm not surprised that he's doing what he's doing. It's He's pretty much doing what he was supposed to do. We knew early on, you know, with that whole little group, that whole crew that uh, they were all growing up together, that they were special. And so I want to know, how are you as fans in the stands? When he gets those sacks, there's that part of me as a father that's like, yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. Get him. I'm pretty quiet. I'm pretty reserved for the most part. You know? Oh, yeah, here you go. Oh, yeah! yeah! I'm, I yell at the refs every now and then. What bits of you do you see in your son on the field, whether it's the competitive edge or the trash talk or whatever yeah, it may be? Yeah. When you see that and you're like, oh, that, that's a little bit of me in there, what, what, what do you see? Mine is definitely the trash talk. And I, being on the sideline, I could hear him. And so when I'm just like, wow, that sounds like me. <laughs> to see that, that passion come out, man, and uh, I think it's great. And I think that's part of it, because that's, that's how I play the game. I play the game hard. 
and plays hard. See your sons on the field here. Were you guys better at this age, or were they better at this age? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm old school. I can't answer that. It, the game has changed. It's a different game now. You let Deuce tell it. He's the best. Me by a mile. It's not even close. Yes, until I have to pull out. You know, hey, look, this is. I made it power five too. You know, then I had right. to pull out the Super Bowl ring. Like you see this right here. How fun is it for you as dads, not former pro athletes, just as a dad to see, to be a part of this? It's just like any other father being able to watch your kid on the field, have success, and be like, wow, you know, he's better than I am. This is a special group, and I, I, I just love watching all of them and how they all interact and how they get along with each other and how they push and motivate each other each and every game. Oh, I love it. So many laughs on the sidelines there in practice. Uh, here's a look at the open bracket. Games start Friday at 7 p.m. Number one seed Hamilton taking on eighth seed ALA Queen Creek. Four seed Cactus will host fifth seed Saguaro, while third ranked Basha hosting sixth ranked Liberty. And two seed Chandler will get seventh seed Queen Creek. It's about to get it on. Mm -hmm. It's about to go down. Three periods wasn't enough for this contest either. It was Kyle. Capo Bianco with the game winner. The goal was initially waved off, then reviewed and deemed good. So the Oats get their second straight win in OT. 2-1 the final. The Yotes have their first winning streak of the year. Luke, oh, the bell. Got to do the, uh, the howl for the Coyotes. Oh. <laughs> Time for a quick break, but don't you dare touch that remote because we are going one-on-one -on -one with one of the Cardinals' stars of the game, Mr. Zach Ertz. Our Sunday conversation coming your way after this short break to get guys healthy and hopefully we continue to attack when we get back. Yeah, Zach, come on. The old linemen have definitely earned uh, some turkey on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Guys, I just love what his foundation is doing. 80,000 meals provided by his wife, Julie, who went to Dobson, a U.S. soccer star, and, and him now living here in the Valley, the couple together. It's just really cool to see what they're doing for our community. And Zach, of course, fitting right in with this offense. It's a perfect fit for this family here in Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go oh, I was go just saying. It. I was just gonna say, keep feeding James Conner and Zach Ertz, and you can keep feeding people in our community. I mean, it's a win-win for both sides of the ball. And I think they said they can't eat the Thanksgiving meal, so yeah, I think so all three of us can pick up the slack and eat more dessert for them. It's a it's a win-win, really. <laughs> now we're talking, Luke. Extra sides. There we go. Yeah. Lather up the gravy. Zach, you earned it. All right, keep staying up with us here on 12 Sports Tonight. We've got our final thoughts on this day in Valley Sports coming up on 12 Sports Tonight. Welcome back to 12 Sports Tonight live from Seattle. Time for last calls, final thoughts. Luke, we'll start with you. What's on your mind, buddy? Ah, oh, you're letting the new guy take it first. I appreciate that. I am just very impressed with the Cardinals. Uh, it's just incredible to think they have the best record in the NFL. They're undefeated in the division and on the road, not to mention the Suns. You have two of the best teams in their respective leagues. Uh, the Valley's got to be very, very proud of these two teams. Coyotes, not so much, but definitely a lot to be excited for. And I think we're all excited about the uh, Super Bowl hopes and aspirations for these Cardinals, because I sure am. Yeah, Luke, you mentioned the Suns being one of the hottest teams, the hottest team in the NBA. I was almost beside myself last night just reading the words Suns and best team in the NBA in the same sentence after about a decade of mediocrity to see that coming to fruition for this team, for this fan base. I mean, it's, it's exciting. And now they're neck and neck with the Warriors for the top seed in the West, the best record in the league. So let's keep it rolling, fellas. Guys, I, I hate to end on a bad note here. I know it's U of A week, big rivalry week for ASU and Arizona. But what, what ASU has go, got going on right now, this football program needs a major change in direction. Herm Edwards is not the guy anymore. And I'm calling on fans to speak up and be vocal about this process. They were promised a winner and have got nothing even close to that, nothing even close to a Pac-12 title. It's time for fans to stand up and say that we are tired of 25 years of mediocrity. This is not going to fly anymore for a program. Lena, you've been around here a while. Luke, you grew up here too as well. Mm -hmm. Something has got to change over there in Tempe because this same old act can't just keep happening anymore. Well, Cam, have you been on Twitter? The fans are very vocal about this. <laughs> yeah. They are ready. They've been ready since the BYU loss. But of course, first things first, Good. no pity for the kitty. Let's close it out with a win in the Territorial Cup coming up here this week. For Cameron Cox, Luke Lidden, I'm Lena Washington. Thanks to everyone from behind the scenes for getting our show on the air tonight. You've been watching 12 Sports Tonight. We'll see you back here next week. You can ask who. It's all about sports. It's all about sports. 12 News Sports.